We determined that no probable cause exists to file any charge against Officer Wilson and returned a no true bill on each of the five indictments. Those are the words that sparked chaos on the streets of Ferguson, Missouri. A grand jury of 12, nine white, three black, three months of deliberations. No indictment for Officer Darren Wilson. Unarmed teen Michael Brown shot multiple times on a Ferguson residential street. Many are enraged, saying his death was in vain. We have coverage from Ferguson to Chicago. Newsbeat starts now. Good morning. Today is November 25th. I'm Priscilla Lopez. And I'm Tiffany Wilson. Welcome to Newsbeat. We've got a lot of news, so let's get to it. Chaos has struck throughout the nation. Our top story today, the Ferguson decision. No indictment against white police officer who shot an unarmed black teenager. The verdict has sparked social unrest. Violent protesters have shut down major highways, burned down buildings and police cars from L.A. to New York. People are also showing their outrage here in Chicago. New Newsbeat's Charles Jefferson is here with the details. Charles? Yeah, thanks, Tiffany and Priscilla. And let me just point out a couple things. Um, for, uh, first, uh, the protests that were here in Chicago were uh, mainly peaceful. Um, there were no reports of any arrests, no reports of any damage to property, and no uh, injuries. There was one incident where we had some people cutting through traffic over on LaSalle and um, getting routed with some of the uh, 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 drivers, um, but that was about it. Um, nothing, nothing uh, too um, rowdy, nothing too chaotic. Um, and again, there were no arrests made or anything like that. So the protesters were uh, uh, mainly peaceful. Now, if we can go ahead and go to that uh, video that we have, um, we the the protest actually started over on uh, 35th in Michigan at the Chicago Police Headquarters, and then they came down Lakeshore Drive, um, and then they when we got over to uh, the police headquarters, they had to uh, send out the mounted uh, police, the ones on the horses. Uh, and then at, at one point on Lakeshore Drive, they had uh, police officers in riot gear ready just in case anything happened. But uh, thankfully, nothing um, too chaotic uh, happened, so the police didn't have to use any of the riot gear. And then they eventually ended up at the Thompson Center uh, where we um, see in the video um, that uh, protesters were chanting things like, whose streets are streets? And um, you can see that these, uh, these people were angry and they were upset and they were uh, just uh, frustrated uh, with the justice system that they weren't getting, getting the, the decision uh, that they were looking for and that they found out that uh, Officer Wilson will not uh, be charged or there's no probable cause to charge him uh, in the shooting death of Michael Brown. And so you have a lot of people that are just angry and upset about that. And, um, what yeah. kind of what kind of uh, interactions did you observe between the people and the police, the protesters? You know, as you can see right here on this video, this this protester here uh, was shot in some obscenities at some of the police officers, and you know you have to give credit to the Chicago Police Department because they remained cool, calm, and collected. Um, they maintained the peace as best they could. Again, uh, there were no arrests made, no nobody rowdy or getting too much out of order. Um, so you really have to. Uh, take your hats off to them because they, you know, did the best they could given the, uh, some of the circumstances, uh, you know, because obviously there were a lot of people uh, that were upset. Mm -hmm. And who did you see out there in the crowd? Um, there were a lot of people. Um, there were people of all different nationalities and people of different uh, age groups as well. You know, this not only affects, um, you know, young uh, black males as it's, as it's been portrayed, you know, this affects a lot of different people um, throughout this country. Um, so everybody has an opinion, everybody has something to say about this. Thank you, Charles. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Moving on to other major news. Michael Brown's family released a statement in response to the grand jury's decision not to indict the officer Darren Wilson. I will read a part of the statement. We are profoundly disappointed that the killer of our child will not face the consequence of his actions. While we understand that many others share our pain, we ask that you channel your frustration in ways that will make a positive change. We need to work together to fix the system that allowed this to happen. 
The man who killed Michael Brown walks away a free man, but Darren Wilson's life will never be the same again. According to multiple sources, the eight-year police veteran is resigning. Also public records show Wilson married a fellow officer named Barbara Spraulding. The wedding took place last month in the city of Clayton, Missouri. A dramatic rescue after a building collapsed without warning. It happened at 58th and Calumet in the Woodlawn neighborhood. This is the scene after the four flat collapsed over the weekend. It was partially rehabbed. The two women living inside got trapped. But because there was an air pocket, they were able to breathe until rescuers found them. The collapse, dam the collapse damaged nearby cars and a building next door. Investigators are trying to figure out what caused the building to collapse. Investigators are trying to figure out what caused a tragic fire in McHenry County. 32 horses died in a stable fire over the weekend. Amber Brownman and her family had attended a banquet Saturday night when they returned. Her sons said they heard a strange noise. That strange noise was the sound of the stables on fire. When firefighters arrived, the stables were in flames. 32 horses were burned alive. Five horses managed to escape. They were found wandering in a pasture later on. The Amber, the owner of Amber Bauman says it's very, it's every barn owner's worst nightmare. The damage estimates are expected to top $1 million. Blaze Soupage made his way to the Chicago's West Side to apologize for a sex scandal that happened at a Catholic grade school. Five boys and maybe more had been molested by a priest at St. Agatha's. Earlier this year, the priest was removed in charge. Supich gave mass at the school. During it, he said, quote, it really is clear that the behavior that was not, is not appropriate. Parishioners say that they hope they can pull, put all this behind them and move forward. Now the controversy, controversy over ride sharing. That's when you use an app to call for a car to pick you up instead of a traditional cab. Cabbies say it's just not fair. They have to follow a bunch of rules and regulations. Rideshare drivers don't. Patty Boskin is live in the newsroom with the latest on the attempts to regulate ride sharing. Patty. Thanks, ladies. The drive to push through statewide regulations for ride sharing is kind of like traffic. It's stop and go. The latest battle mainly focuses on rider safety. Uber is giving Chicago cabbies a run for their money and winning over both riders and drivers. The company especially encourages residents from underserved communities to sign up to become Uber drivers. To be exact, 95% of all Uber drivers are from these Chicago neighborhoods. Uber might be the most popular way to catch a ride now, but Chicago taxi drivers are calling it foul. Meanwhile, Uber boasts job creation, cab drivers say the company overlooks safety. For example, Uber drivers are required to submit pictures of their own vehicles. This is considered one of their only safety inspections. Cab drivers we talked to did not want to appear on camera in fear of being pursued by the up-and-coming company and in light of the call for stricter safety regulations. They have no rules and regulation, nothing. They just pick up the customer, drop the customer. They have killed the taxi industry business. But Uber disagrees. They say stricter regulations will only restrict riders' freedom of choice. This bill would add a lot of red tape and cost onto the business that would eventually find its way to riders, and that's, that's not something that we want. The union that represents cab drivers say if tough regulations are not passed, they do plan to protest. That could mean pickets at state office buildings or blue flu. That's when all the cabbies call off sick on the same day. Let's just hope that doesn't happen during holiday rush. I'm Patty Boskin, live in the newsroom, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Patty. President Obama will return to Chicago today, hoping to move forward with the immigration bill. He plans to visit the Copernicus Community Center, a health facility for illegal immigrants. Mr. Obama signed a directive that prevents the deportation of 4 million immigrants here in the U.S. The president is expected to arrive in the afternoon. It will be a short trip. Mr. Obama will leave about three hours later. 
two areas in the world affected by natural disasters. A massive blizzard brings northern New York much to worry about what Mother Nature has in store for them. Japan finds itself in a blackout, how the country is suffering after an earthquake. Melting snow from the Buffalo area's epic snowstorm raises flood concerns. Officials warn residents in western New York to prepare for a massive flood. Temperatures are rising, which means the snow melt will melt fast. On top of that, Buffalo and other counties are expecting 8 inches of rain or more. The National Weather Service says people should build an emergency kit and make family communication plans. As experts are telling residents to do a couple of things like make sure they turn off the utilities in their home and to visit a government website for more safety tips. While New York is still recovering from the snowstorm, Japan just got hit by the destructive earthquake. At least 40 people were injured with no deaths reported during the earthquake in Japan Saturday night. The 6.7 magnitude earthquake struck shortly after 10 p.m. Saturday. The hardest hit areas appeared to be Hakuba, the, visit, the village that hosted events in the 1998 Winter Olympics. Rescuers in the near Hakuba found 21 people trapped in their collapsed homes on Saturday. The earthquake caused blackouts affecting about 1,600 of the homes. While Japan is shaking, Chicago's winter is not all about the cold temperature. The new Penguin of Madagascar movie might bring some warmness to your cold days. Let's find out if this movie is worth the price of the admission ticket after the break. Another person has come forth about Bill Cosby's sexual abuse allegations, and it's not a woman. Former NBC employee Frank Scotty claims he helped the comedian pay off eight different women with thousands of dollars in money orders. Frank says he did a lot of crazy things for Cosby, including guarding his dressing room whenever young models were inside. After years on the job, Frank threw in the towel, saying he quit because of the many girls Cosby was involved with. Frank now lives in Lakewood, New Jersey, and has copies of the money orders detailing his payouts to four of Cosby's women. The Hunger Games series is back and scoring big across the country. Mockingjay Part 1 brought in a whopping total of $123 million in ticket sales over the weekend. That means it's not only the number one movie, but also the biggest movie opening of the year. Lionsgate split the final trilogy into two parts. So fans, be on the lookout for the next Hunger Games flick. Mockingjay Part 2 will be out in November over next year. Hunger Games is not the only series that's making its way back to theaters. Newsbeat's Brittany Delk is here to tell us whether the new animation film Penguins of Madagascar is worth the price of admission. Brittany? Thanks, guys. That's right, you may recognize the infamous four penguins from the Madagascar series, but this time they're starring in their very own movie, Disney's Disney DreamWorks Animation, Penguins of Madagascar. We're the elitist of the elite. up Whoa, hey now. Your favorite penguins are hitting the big screen once again in their very own movie, Penguins of Madagascar. Skipper, Kowalski, Rico, and Private take off on a 3D whirlwind adventure and teams up with the high-tech elite Northwind to stop evil villain Dr. Octavius Braun from taking over the world. But when Skipper, Kowalski, and Rico end up in trouble, it's up to Private to prove that he is a valuable member of the team. It's one action-packed comedy that will leave you laughing and cheering the penguins on till the very end. Okay, then. It's clear what we need to do next. You're going to want to bring the whole family along for the fun. You can see Penguins of Madagascar in theaters tomorrow on November 26. The back-to-back -back action, high explosion, and cool comedy is why this movie is definitely worth the price of admission. Back to you, ladies. Thank you. 
Rain didn't stop the Bears from pulling a victory at Soldier Field. Find out why the Bears' postseason is a long shot, despite the back-to-back -back wins. Feast your eyes on this. Watch 10 contestants gobble down 20-pound turkeys in the world top eating competition. Are the Bears finally on the right track, or is it too late? The Bulls have another devastating industry, injury, and amazing play made by NFL player. Newsfeed's Ashley Richardson is here to tell us what's going on in the world of sports. Ashley? Thank you, ladies. The Bears started off rough in yesterday's game, but the defense finally stepped up. Let's take a look at the game. Bears defense finally got their act together with just under seven minutes to go in the first. Tampa Bay quarterback Josh McCowan throws the ball, and it's picked off by Conte. The offense takes the field, and Cutler is sacked. Now back to Tampa Bay, McCown throws a bomb to Evans, but it's not enough to keep the Bucks in the game. The Bears come out with a victory. Final score, 21-13. The Bears are now 5-6. Bears take on the Lions Thursday in Detroit. This is possibly the best catch ever seen in the NFL. You've got to watch this. Odell Beckham Jr. made this amazing play. He goes up and makes a one-handed catch from Eli Manning, and the Giants get the TD. It's the most talked about catch of this season. The Bulls take on the Trailblazers on the road. Derrick Rose and Pau Gasol were noticeably out for the Bulls, and it hurt them this time around. Dunleavy knocks Lillard down after he goes up for the three. Dunleavy gets into a scuffle with Matthews and Brooks. Dunleavy gets fouled, and Matthews and Brooks walk away with offset technicals. Then Gibson suffers an injury to his left ankle, helping the Trailblazers steal the win. Final score, 105-87. to It's the Bulls' first loss on the road this season. And now real quick, Indianapolis Colts wide receiver T.Y. Hilton helped lead the Colts to a victory just hours after his daughter was born. Next, Soviet Union coach Victor Tiranov, whose team fell to the United States in the infamous miracle game of the 1980 Olympics, has died at the age of 84. And finally, North Carolina players damaged Duke's visiting locker room after celebrating a victory. The players used spray paint, causing thousands of dollars in damage. Now, ladies, I don't think the back-to-back -back bear wins at home are enough to get the Bears anywhere in the postseason. It's pretty disappointing. Yeah, I don't know if fans are convinced yet. I don't know if they'll make them go to the stadium and cheer them on like before, especially with this, these cold temperatures that we've been getting. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Ten competitive eaters are getting an early start to Thanksgiving. The contestants gobbled away at 20-pound turkeys at the World Turkey Eating Championship. Two, one, TV. Fans packed the Foxwood Resort Casino in Connecticut over the weekend to cheer on the best of the best. Contestants stuffed their faces in hopes of walking away with the $5,000 check. But in the end, it was 31-year-old Joey Chestnut who was crowned the world's top competitive eater. The California native ate 9.35 pounds of meat off the bone in just 10 minutes. The remaining $10,000 was divided amongst the other contestants. That's all the time we have for today. Hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. I'm Tiffany Wilson. And I'm Priscilla Lopez. Thanks for joining us here on Newsbeat.